These are your standard first operation chucks. They're very good for a very good clamping force. They're cheap, they're very durable. They're not really that concentric. If you get one out of the box that's within a few thou, that's great. You can adjust it a little bit uh, when you mount it to the back plate, but you can only adjust it for one clamping size. So let's say for example, I'm clamping on this bar and I adjust this, it's a rear mounting, so you can loosen the bolts on the back a little bit and then knock it around with a dead blow hammer and indicate until you get this gauge pin concentric, right? But then as soon as you take that out and you clamp on a larger piece, there's no guarantee that you're gonna have that concentricity on the larger diameter part. That's the limitation with these chucks. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check the concentricity on this one, see what we're at for now. Demount it, take a look at the inside. We're gonna add four set screws and make it a set true chuck. In the catalogs, we'll call them adjustable structure. Sometimes they're set true, some of them are tech true. They all have four set screws and they all adjust the concentricity of the chuck on the back plate. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a cheap chuck and we're gonna make it set true and then see how precise we can get our gauge pin after that. Let's look at this gauge pin in this chuck before we modify it and take a look at what the concentricity is. For an old three jaw, this is pretty good. A little over three thousandths, three and a half thousandths. So not terrible. So let's take a look at the parallelism here or the alignment of the gauge pin to the center line of the spindle. That will tell us how straight or perpendicular the jaws are ground to the chuck. We're starting out at zero on the end of the pin here. As I feed in, we're getting some drift. So there's a little bit of angle or taper ground into these jaws or worn into these jaws. These are kind of old. So we're looking about eight or nine tenths. So that's not great, that's unfortunate, but that's a separate issue that can be fixed by grinding the jaws later. But we can work on our concentricity by making the chuck adjustable first. So let's do that. <laughs> And here we go. Normally what I would do for this is I would do a full chuck rebuild, machining the adjustable set screws in it, cleaning the whole thing, deburring it, and rebuilding it. For the video here, we're just going to put it back together so that we can test it. But just so you know, that's what you'll need to do. So this lip, we're gonna make it a little bit deeper this way, a little bit smaller in diameter so that it has the ability to float inside the recess on this chuck. So this will slide out of here. Some of them are really tight. This one's not too bad. Pretty good close tolerance slip fit. And it's just a cast iron part. And then you can see the scroll in here. This is the back of the scroll, the gear on the back of the scroll, gears that give you your adjustment. One option is that you can put your adjustable set screws in here and then you can put this back in. What I have been doing is not putting that plate back in, or if I do, I'll put in something thinner so we have more room for adjustment. The fixture's now aligned, and now we're just gonna get our X position of the part itself. And then we're gonna call that X.1, because right, we have a 200 diameter edge finder here. We'll go to zero. It's actually uh, X.1 negative, so that when we go to zero, we're actually on zero. Visual confirmation, just to be sure, and then we're good to go. So now what we need to do is decide how far back we want these set screws to be based on how much room we have in our lip here, 150 thousandths. And then this is probably the trickiest part is you need to find four positions on the diameter of this truck that you can drill and tap that are not gonna interfere with any of the other holes. So you can do that visually also. Use things like parallel to help you. I'm gonna guess and try a couple positions here. These would obviously clear in Z to do a cross hole pattern in Y. I think we would clear there too. Not too bad on this one. It's only got six holes in the back to deal with. I just put a little mark here on our intended orientation. I'm gonna move the spacer back to zero so that we have easy angle numbers to work with. And then I'm gonna rotate the chuck to where we want it to be. So we are X150 and we're centered on Y. Let's just go around and double check our angles. So this would be hole number one at zero degrees. That's gonna be fine. It's not too close to that threaded hole. That one's definitely fine. 
what is it, 270 I think the other one is, and they're all clear. And I already know what size I want. This is a 316 spot drill. So I'm just going to go basically to the diameter of that spot drill because I know that works well for the uh, set screw we're going to use. I'm going to mark our Z so I can get the same chamfer on all the holes. On most machines, you would do one hole at a time and change tools. On this machine, since it's a manual tool changer, it's easier to do all your operations with one tool and then move to the next one. But again, that's up to you if you want to be super precise. I would finish one hole and then move to the next one. tap those. I'm going to tap these by hand. So we're doing an A32 tap here. I know somebody out there is going to complain that that set screw is too small, but I encourage everybody to do whatever size they feel is appropriate. I've used uh, the A32s on a lot of these small chucks and they've worked great. I would recommend going to the largest one you can fit. Set screws are not really intended for taking a ton of load. These are just adjusting your location. You want to make sure that you tighten the mounting bolts of your chuck again after you adjust it with the set screws. Some of you might already have a adjustable structure chuck. If you look at the back of those, they have a lot more material and it's actually a different design back here. That's great for the larger chucks, especially if you're gonna be doing heavy cuts with it, things like that, those are built more rugged. The body of this chuck is thick enough. This is like 600 thousandths of cast iron here. That would be my only concern with uh, doing this to a larger chuck is that you would run the risk with a large set screw. You could put enough force on there to deform the chuck body and then you're basically negating any benefits that you might be gaining by doing this to it. Another thing about the set screw, I would recommend the alloy set screws. Get something that's kind of hard and it's not going to deform or wear out. And also you want to either get the flat tip set screws or just turn or grind the tips off of whatever ones you get so that they're flat. And you do want to get a nice sharp fresh tap for cast iron it'll work great dry but if you get something that dulls it is going to give you a lot of trouble and we're through again this is a great uh, thing to do for small hobby machines if you've got one of the little bench top blades and you got a couple different chucks for it if you can make it set true it gives you a lot more capacity to do precision work with it and even if you have a collet chuck or something like that, those are repeatable, usually, you know, a good one, easily within a thousand, taking parts in and out and reclamping and things like that. Even a lot of those are not adjustable. So there we go, this is basically done. So this is the back plate. So I'm gonna trim the back plate a little bit deeper. We're gonna go 200,000 steep instead of 125 on this step. And we're gonna reduce this diameter by about 40 thousandths and uh, give us some adjustment room there.
So since we cut this directly on the spindle, it's going to be square and flat to the spindle. We don't have to worry about this face. It's not contacting anything. We'll just do a little chamfer here to get the burrs off and we'll be good to go. And there we go. What I'll do to start out is try to adjust it concentric pretty close just by feel. So if we look at the indicator now, 13 thousandths right now. The indicator needle moving clockwise is to its max position is, gonna, is your highest spot. This set screw is closest to that setting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen that a little bit. And then we're gonna go to our low spot and we're gonna tighten it if we can. Go back to our high spot, loosen that one a little bit. Lowest spot, tighten that if we can. High spot again, it's about eight thou here. And we wanna get it to the point where the needle doesn't move basically. We are within a thou now. Usually when I get within a couple thou, I'll just go around uh, to tighten them because you wanna make sure that all four have contact and relatively equal pressure on the back plate. We're within a couple tenths right now, but it gives you the ability to dial in an individual part that needs to be perfect. You can do that in a few minutes. Let's bring this back to zero and we're getting plus or minus about a tenth. For a three-jaw chuck that's uh, self-centering, that's pretty awesome, and we're good to go.